Hey guys, how's it going? Josh Spoon here with The Producer's Kitchen, and I wanted to show you guys a cool uh, plugin called DDLY by Isotope. It's really cool. It uh, has two delay units, and it chooses one or the other based off of kind of like a compression kind of system where you have a threshold that sets and it chooses one or the other depending on the volume that comes in. And then you can set the intensity kind of like a ratio. So it's really cool to be able to have complex delays and we're gonna check it out right now. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of the uh, settings that Isotope put in their documentation so you can see kind of how it sounds and then we'll go into the nuts and bolts and kind of make something interesting. And the project that I have is just three tracks, drums, bass, keys, and I'm gonna run each of them through a group track in live and solo and unsolo each track and turn on individually each uh, preset. Okay, so this first uh, one is uh, a vintage modulation. It's kind of a dirty flange chorus, they say. And so I have that one on right now and I'm gonna solo each one. So I'm gonna start with the drums and I'll turn it off so you can just hear what the drums sound like. And I'll turn it on. So it's a cool little back and forth. I'm gonna to go to the keys, turn that one on. And let's actually turn off the delay first. We'll listen to it by itself. And I'll turn um, the vintage modulation on. So you can see how that kind of sounds. It's able to pitch things and granulize stuff as well. So that's part of what's happening on here. All right, and then let's listen to the bass. And this is uh, the Max for Live bass that just came with uh, the 9.5 update. So it sounds really nice. And let's listen to it with it on. So it's a crazy swirl. So you can see it's a pretty crazy swirl going on over there. And obviously you can tweak all of these, you know, it doesn't, um, if you're listening to it and say, oh, I would, you know, dial back the mix or something like that, you know, you can do that. Okay, let's take a look at the second plugin in my group list called Dynamic Slap. So this one, if you ever heard of a slapback delay, it's the uh, initial sound hits and then immediately there's like another one kind of slapping back on it. So this one is called Dynamic because it has both the bottom and top um, delays. So it's a dynamic slap. Real quick, we'll listen to it without anything on it, and then I'll just turn it on, because we already kind of know what it sounds like already. Cool. Now let's check out the piano line. This one's a little more subtle. You can kind of hear like a quick slap back on the piano, but not as well as the drums or the bass. So you can see the intensity changing, but it's very subtle. And sometimes subtle is what you need. Let's go to the bass. So 
So you can hear it really growly and stripping it apart with the delay. And um, you can even see it on the display what's happening. So before we go to the third um, preset that I made, I just want to let you know these um, four that I have on this track are individual copies of DDLY, and I was just too lazy to make um, presets for them. So it's not like each one of these presets is a separate um, plugin. It's all the same plugin. I just copied it four times, changed a couple of things. So you can also go in and make your presets and then just switch between the drop down. So. Okay, so this last one, I skipped over the third because it doesn't really do too much to these three sounds, um, but it may do, if you try it, something to yours. It's just, you've got to tweak it. I'm using the fourth one in the list. That one is called uh, Slapback Delay. So we already did kind of, we did the dynamic delay, but the slapback is a little bit different because it's using um, granular um, delay. You can do what's called grab little grains of the sound and then pitch in each individual one. And you'll kind of hear that it sounds like, like grains of sand a little bit being pitched up. So uh, let me play it by itself, each track, just like we've done. And then I'll turn on the effect. So it's pretty subtle on the drums. But let's check out the piano. So you can hear kind of it's like, it's kind of like it's disintegrating and floating up almost, you know. So it's a very cool, grain delays are very cool effects to have. And with this, you could have a grain delay and a regular just basic time delay with the top and bottom. I'll play it again. And then let's do the bass. I'll turn it off. So you can kind of hear that. You can hear it kind of flowing off of the sound, um, almost like evaporation in a sense. And uh, you can add these to different tracks and things like that and get different kind of textures. So the next thing we're going to do is just play around with it, see how it works, get into the inner workings of it. Okay, let's take a look at the UI. So the first thing uh, we want to look at is each one of these delay units has the same parameters. So if we look, I'll turn on the bottom one. Here's a solo, analog delay, grain delay. So right now it's on analog because it's green. If I hit that, you can see it's highlighted the G. And you can see the things that change, these knobs over here. So when it's grain, you have the ability for setting the pitch of the grains and the size of the grains. And then when it's analog, this turns into trash which adds a little bit of distortion and how much of the dry signal is going to come through. Uh, then you have a sync, so you turn that off. This becomes millisecond based. And so you can toggle between the two of those. Same thing with the top. The top has the same kind of setup. The thing that sets the two of them apart is this intensity knob and this threshold. So if you've ever used a compressor, you know, if you set a certain threshold and it goes over it, it starts compressing. So a similar kind of thing here is if you have a certain threshold and you go over it, it actually starts using this delay. And just like a compressor, it uses it as to a certain degree depending on your intensity, which is kind of like a ratio. It has its own, I think, attack and decay kind of inside. So it's cool because that's what makes it a dynamic delay. 
each one uh, works depending on the volume that's coming in. So you can have this one happen if you're playing softly, and you can have the top one happen if you're playing louder. And when you're playing louder, it's playing the lower and the top one at the same time. Okay, so let's play around with this thing from scratch. So I just pulled one into the drums track so uh, we can have a lot more dynamics because obviously drums are gonna have a lot of volume fluctuation. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the top one. I'm just gonna turn on the bottom one and I'm gonna program this one first and then we'll do the top one. So I don't want to turn the feed up all the way to 100%, that's going to go crazy. I'm going to add a little bit of trash distortion in here. I can also use the filter to cut out certain, certain frequencies. So now I have this kind of low frequency, uh, trashy delay going on. So if I turn the dry all the way down, you can kind of hear just the effect of the wet. So I'll turn that down. Then I'll turn this off for a second. I'll program the top by itself. add a little bit more intensity. I'm going to grain delay this. So you can hear the hi-hats change a little bit. I'm going to feed it back a little bit. And I'm going to pitch it up by about four. And let's change the size a little bit. Let me turn the mix up so you can hear just all the grain delay. So I don't want to have that up high because I already have a crazy low frequency thing happening. So I'm going to Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of like in key with the drums. A little bit kind of, you know, um, detuned a little bit. So I can set the intensity, if I pull this all the way up, you can hear there's no um, top delay at all. So I'll pull this down a little bit. So right here, I have just a little bit, I can pull it down more. Or if I, then it's just gonna be on pretty much the whole time. Cause you can see all these spikes pretty much come through most of the time. So going to have it get the top amount and I can change the intensity if I wanted to. And you can see it's ducking down more. Here it's more attacking. So I like that. Let me turn on the bottom delay here. So let me turn the wet down a little bit. Actually, that low end is kind of crazy. Let me pull that back a little bit. Let me solo the bottom one again. So obviously all this stuff is automatable. So you can kind of bring it in, trash it, bring it back. On solo. So there's a lot of fun to be had with this device. Um, definitely go check it out on the Isotope website. It's definitely something that you can use in everyday use. It's not something you'll buy and go, oh man, why did I buy this? This doesn't really have a use. It's delays and it's uh, multiple delays that depend on your signal input. So there's a lot of cool little nuances that can be had with it. 
and stuff that's not really out there. Um, that if you did want to do it, you'd have to build it yourself. And they've already done the work, so why not grab it? All right, I'm Josh Spoon for the Producers Kitchen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next tutorial.